Texas. The fans are back at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium to see a top 10 Texas team for the first time since 2010. And with that, we welcome you into the broadcast booth. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick. That's the old question, right? It's gone from a <laughs> meme from Joe Tessitore to an actual theme for Texas football. Yeah, it's, it's the first time I've heard that question. Is, <laughs> yeah. Texas, that, yeah, you are, never heard that before. <laughs> are we serious? I mean, come on. We're not going to know that for a while. Yeah. I mean, there's a ways to go before they've actually won a championship, won 10 games, and Texas fans will tell you, that's all that matters, not getting to game six or win number six. Tom Herman looking for win number six this afternoon after the massive win over Oklahoma at the Cotton Bowl a week ago. Baylor won the toss and deferred, so Texas will receive Deshaun Jamison back to return for the Horns. Drew Galitz. Set to kick away for Baylor. Had a pretty fired up crowd here. We're happy to have the Longhorns back. Unbeaten in Big 12 play thus far. At 3 and 0, the Bears are 2 and 1. Here we go. And out to the 25 yard line will come Sam Ellinger. Texas through and through. Austin native from Westlake High School. His mom Jenna in attendance for every game. His late father Ross, both he and Jenna, Texas grads. And Ellinger has become the guy. Seventh start in seven games this year. Yeah, he's brought a toughness to this offense with his legs, and he's brought the deep ball with his arm. On first down, it's Lil Jordan Humphrey. Big bodied receiver. It's brought down after a gain of about four. Yeah, Ellinger has become the focal point of this offense, and when he's not the focal point, it's those big receivers like Humphrey. That might be a backwards pass. They're going to rule it incomplete. Incomplete forward pass, and that will bring up third down. Got a little dicey momentarily. Blitz coming from Baylor. And Ellinger connects with Colin Johnson. He had the catch across the sticks. Forward progress gives them the first down. Well, that's the underrated thing about Ellinger folks don't talk about. Smarts, recognition, sees the blitz right away, adjusts, hits the stop route, the stick route, first down. Already we've seen both big receivers involved, Johnson and Humphrey. Ellinger, oof, smacked Greg Roberts with the penetration initially, and then Christian Morgan swallowed him up for a loss. Baylor defense that has struggled this year, especially giving up the big plays. Ellinger, there's Lil Jordan Humphrey, just bigger than most, out to midfield. Mix up 16. Straight up the gut, it's Trey Watson, the grad transfer, and he picks up six yards.
will set up second and four. A comeback for the Florida Gators, Dave. Thank you so much. You guys saw it in Nashville, a ranked team in conference play getting tested early. Here, for the first time since 2010, Texas is a top 10 team coming off a massive win against Oklahoma in the Red River game a week ago. And now they bring that top 10 ranking home to see if they can handle the success against Baylor sitting at two and one in conference play are the Bears. Well, that's been the question all week around practice. Complacency, resting on last week, taking Baylor lightly. Don't do it. There is Sam Ellinger barreling ahead for the first down into Baylor territory. Opening series of the game and Sam Ellinger in an early rhythm. The Texas boy through and through, a Horn fan from birth, the Austin native. His mom, Jenna, in attendance as usual. Of course, his late father, Ross, a Texas grad as well. Watson gets swallowed up after a yard. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Keshnick, all with you from Darrell K. Royal Memorial Stadium for a big game in the Big 12. And it's hard not to root for a guy like Ellinger, who has wanted to be the Texas quarterback since he was a kid. He mentioned his dad and had a little blood on that throwing hand there. Yeah. On second down, Ellinger fires and connects with one of his two huge bodied receivers, Lil Jordan Humphrey, for eight yards. You know, you talked about Ellinger and his, his dad who passed away. He and his dad shared a dream of him becoming the Texas quarterback. Watson, nothing there. I would imagine last week's win, the biggest of Sam Ellinger's career, would have made Ross very happy, and Sam said as much. Yeah, absolutely. Lost his dad when he was, what, 14 years 14 old? 14 years old. I'm going to go for it on fourth down and two here. And Watson surges ahead to the 27 yard line. Needed two, got three, and Texas keeps on moving the chains. You know, the question about is Texas back has always centered on, on the quarterback, but it's really about the offensive line, the defensive line, and how Officials physical Texas can be. Can they be the bully of the Big 12? And that's what Tom Herman wants to do. He wants his team to be the most physical team, hard-running, downhill team there is in the Big 12 to go against all the spread teams. And you see they're taking a look at Ellinger. We showed you the blood on his hand earlier. Now this is an official's timeout to make sure that that gets cleaned up. Well, here comes Shane Bouchelle. He and Ellinger split the starts all of last season. Bouchelle was beaten out for the starting job by Sam Ellinger this year. In fact, this is the first appearance of the season for Shane Bouchelle, who was the starter for Texas two seasons ago as a true freshman. And a whistle before the play. Prior to the staff, delay of game. It's first down. Delay of game penalty after the changeover in quarterback, so a five-yard penalty. So Tom Herman knew that uh, telling Shane that he had lost the job would be difficult, but he didn't waste time. He told him right away before classes started, and that's important. We'll tell you why. Bouchelle under pressure, threw it too high with that <laughs> long arm <laughs> receiver, Colin Johnson at 6'6", six, six, yeah, mailed nothing, him out. Nothing's too high for him. <laughs> not, not, at, not at that height and with that leaping ability. He can get up there and get it. Hey, man, I wouldn't know, all right? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but Her Herman told Bouchelle so that he would have the option to transfer and save a year if he wanted to. And he still has the opportunity to redshirt if he wanted to because this is only the first appearance. Right. For Shane Bouchelle in a game this year. Full start. Offense number 52. 
five yard penalty. Yeah, that sloppiness Second isn't going to sit well with, with Herman. It's a sign of being a little bit, uh, you know, unfocused. Q? Yeah, Ellinger in the tent right now. So, so this drive looks like it's going to be all Bouchel. Yeah, Ellinger getting that hand taken care of. Looked like it was bloodied up. Not sure if it was from his hand, but that hand was bloodied up. Bouchel looking for Humphrey, and a good job by the linebacker Jordan Williams to knock it down. Yeah, he got that hand in there. It's really well done. Getting back to Bouchel, you mentioned the transfer rule, the new transfer rule. He can play up to four games. And then if he chooses the transfer, he could. And, and Herman said, look, he's going to support him completely, whatever he wants to do. And he's been the model backup quarterback here. So the future is uncertain, but he's helping the team right now. And right now, this is the 13th play of this opening Texas drive with Bouchelle taking off. Has to cover a lot of ground, though, and it'll be fourth down. And he took a big hit at the end of that. Yeah. And the offense is different when Bouchelle is in there. He is not the same physical runner that Ellinger is. So Ellinger back out of the tent at the very least as Cameron Dicker, the freshman kicker, gets set for a 40-yarder. The same length of field goal that beat Oklahoma a week ago. He's become a local hero after that game-winning kick a week ago. Sam Ellinger out of the tent, headed to the locker room. Interesting story here in Austin to start the day. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation 4. Moments ago, we told you about Sam Ellinger, who started the opening series. We're not sure where the blood is coming from, but you can see he had some blood on his nose and some blood on his hand. Not sure if there is a distinct cut or not. We'll get you more as we go on. Shane Bouchel, plenty of experience, makes his first appearance of the season on the last series. And Texas comes away with a field goal. A lot going on early here in Austin. Yeah, and that offense changes with Bouchel. The power running game from the quarterback position really isn't the same. A touchback as we check in with Adnan Vert, my man. Kicking team number 28, five yard penalty from the dead ball spot, first down. Thanks so much, Adnan. So here's Charlie Brewer from right here in Austin, Texas. Lake Travis High School, his dad, Robert, in attendance today, a former Texas quarterback. His grandfather, Charles, a former Texas quarterback, did not receive a scholarship offer from the Longhorns. Grew up coming to games here at DKR, and for the first time in his life, the Texas legacy takes the field at Texas's home turf. What a day. You think he's a little bit juiced up about this? I mean, he grew up with a Colt McCoy jersey, a Vince Young jersey. He did everything in high school to earn an offer. Charlie Strong did not offer, and he was only offered a walk-on spot. He'll sling it out for Chris Platt in space, brought down by Brandon Jones. That's a good open field tackle by Jones, but getting back to Brewer, he, he is part of Texas royalty, his family. His brother, when he came out of high school, also wasn't offered by Texas. They opted for David Ash instead. So, you know, this is a personal game for Brewer. This is where you would expect Texas to heat him up a little bit. Will bring four on the rush. Brewer has a man for a first down. Jalen Hurd, the former Tennessee Vol running back, has really acclimated nicely as a receiver. Great protection, and what a throw. And if Brewer gets protection like this, Texas is going to have a hard time dealing with these receivers. 
He is a very accurate quarterback. If you don't force him to move, and particularly to his left, he'll, he'll chop you up. Back out to Platt. Good run on first down after the catch. Brought down by Gary Johnson. Brewer's accuracy was so good in high school. I mean, he set a national record at 77%. That's when he won a state championship two years ago for Lake Travis. The shifting by Jamichael Hasty for the first down. He'll take it into Texas territory at the 42. So here is Charles Brewer who talked with Charlie before the game yesterday. There's dad Robert who beat Bear Bryant's Alabama team in the 1982 Cotton Bowl and there's his uncle Rob who played quarterback and tailback in the 80s for the Texas Longhorns. But he's not wearing the burnt orange. He's wearing the green of Baylor. He'll dump it off for Christoph Henley. It'll be a gain of six. So there's a section dedicated to the Texas Letterman's Club. Right in the thick of that, there's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing his Baylor, jer uh, Baylor polo shirt. Knows this field, knows this stadium all too well. The whole Brewer family, including his brother Michael, his mom Laura, his sister Katie, they're all in the thick of that burnt orange in that Texas section. And Brewer is trying to focus on the game. He, we thought he was wound a little tight yesterday, but he's not having any trouble right now. Hasty fighting for yardage. Ripped down by B.J. Foster close to the sticks. You know, we, we thought Brewer was kind of holding his emotions in yesterday when, when we talked to him. First game here at DKR, he said, nah, I'm cool once I get off the bus. As the first down on the sneak, and more. Out of the pack, Charlie Brewer barreling into the red zone. Now, that run will get him settled. If he had some nerves, this run here, picking up the first down and taking a shot, watch this. He's going to get a shot here. Stiff arm, take that shot. He's ready to play now. He told us, maybe when I get off the bus, yeah. maybe when I come onto the field, but it didn't seem like he was 100% yeah. sure when those those feelings would go away. Guarantee you. That might be the spot. That's yeah. the spot He's right there. He's comfy now. And they've been really good in the red zone this year. John Lovett back after missing last week's game against Kansas State. Gets swallowed up by B.J. Foster. You know, Adam, once you get in the red zone, you want to convert touchdowns at a rate of about 75%. They've been just under 70%. They got a chance here. They've got tall receivers. They spread you out. You know, they haven't gotten the ball to Johnson, except that one high throw he came up with. This is an area that could be Johnson time. Brewer is going to take off. A penalty marker thrown as he's chased out by Boyd. I said Johnson, I meant Mims. Big bodied receiver on yep. the outside for Baylor. Yep. Very underrated. Could make an argument for him being the best receiver in the, in the Big 12. Sure. Holding offense number 77. 10-yard penalty. Reggie Smith lets us know that Patrick down. Lawrence got tagged with the holding penalty, so that'll negate the gain. Matt Rule's team has scored on 23 of 24 red zone chances. They've scored a touchdown two out of every three trips. Yeah, you know, and emotionally, this game is playing out the way Rule would like it to be. You know, no big plays for Texas. They get a field goal. You're running out the clock in the first quarter here, deliberately. On second and long, they'll find Marcus Jones to the 19-yard line. Third down coming up for Baylor. You know, he, he'd like to drag this game out, a slow, deliberate thing so the fans don't get into it. Right. That the players aren't as hyped and as excited as they were last week and get it to the fourth quarter.
You know, Adam, any time he sees 15 Mims in single coverage, that's a, that's a go. Bottom of the formation, Mims. Brewer for Mims. Touchdown, Baylor. And the Bears jump out in front on their opening series. Well, give credit to Brewer for recognizing right away that he had a man-on-man -man situation. And when he's got that with Mims, that's a win. De Devontae Davis trying to cover him. He gets inside of him. Now watch this. He gets a move to get inside. He gives him a little double move there and a push-off. But you know, that's a great route. A little push-off at the end, but Davis has got to hang on. Flag thrown before Connor Martin's extra point attempt. But again, the, the recognition by Brewer right off the bat that he had man-to-man -man out there made everything. Number 52, five-yard penalty, try for point. False start against Baylor, against Tecklenburg. They were perfect on third down on that drive. A couple three of long of ones. Three. Yep. Yeah. Charlie Brewer had that 14-yard run hey. where he was able to get the first down. Hey, he told us yesterday he'd be all business and be cool right off the bat. He's pretty cool on that series. He knew what he was talking about. Yep. I, I think that hit helped him. They converted a couple of third and longs, and they cash in on the road. Baylor on top. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation 4, the best place to play, and in part by the well-connected 2019 NKC. Just in case Bebo uh, leaves a little trail, we're here to clean it up. Show us the bucket. Right here, right here. This is our poop bucket, not our feet. I love that poop bucket. <laughs> oh, how fitting. And, and just to add a little insult to injury after the win a week ago oh. for Texas. When Bevo 15's ready to go, so are, are the guys on his crew behind him. Oh, uh, Bevo I can't, 15. I can't believe Q asked for the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why the, the most intrepid of reporters but you willing had to, to ask the you tough had questions. to know it would be an OU bucket. Of course, this that's well done <laughs> by the Texas staff. Right now, oh, you oh, had that, one job. <laughs> oh, man. Connor Martin. I'm gonna I, guess I, though that had to do with a little bit of the wind. That wind was surprisingly strong on the field before what, the game. What though. do you think the odds are that David Pollock and Maria Taylor have? Oh, that that's next oh, week? I, listen, Connor Martin. I apologize. Yeah. I know it was probably the wind more than anything. That's the wind yeah. that fell down. Still, but you know what? That's gonna make game day next. We're not that's too Charlie proud. Brown. That, that was that was Lucy and Charlie <laughs> yeah, Brown. Yeah, straight a little out bit. of Charlie Brown. Wind <laughs> uh, right to left. <laughs> uh, Drew Galitz, rather on the uh, kickoff. Beg your pardon. That's gonna be on Sports yep. Getting a little help from his friends here to get this kick off. So after all that, Texas out to the 25-yard line. Shane Bouchel taking over for a second series. We'll talk about that when you return to Austin. First 10 snaps before Shane Bouchel came in. Could not get a first down. You see the blood on the right hand of Sam Ellinger and some blood on his nose as well. For more, down to Quinn. Yeah, we are waiting on Sam to reemerge from the Texas locker room. It's been over 15 minutes. Fans all wondering what happened to him, what's wrong. We've seen him run up the tunnel, and that's about it for the last 15. So Bouchel starts this drive cue from the 25. And he gives to Trey Watson. And a good run on first down. So Q, with Ellinger out, I think there's more pressure on this offensive line because the quarterback run game isn't the same with Bouchel. No, and, and Texas should have success today because Baylor's run defense is one of the worst in college football. You know, Trey Watson running back and Keontae Ingram could have big days. If you're Baylor right here, though, Rod, do you downplay the quarterback keep on, on, on their zone reads? No, I, I think if you are, are Baylor, yeah, you're right. You want Bouchelle to run the ball on those zone reads because you think they're going to eliminate the quarterback power run altogether. Clay Johnston, their inside linebacker, 
shaken up momentarily. Johnston went to the sideline, the oftentimes injured linebacker a year ago. He brought in Terrell Bernard and Ross Matisic as extra linebackers. Now this is a relatively small linebacking core for Baylor. Would expect Texas to keep going at them. And they'll keep it on the ground here. Greg Roberts wraps up Watson. Short of the line to gain as we check in with Adnan Verk in the studio. Thanks very much, A.V. Watson moves the chains, and it'll be first and 10 Texas at the 37. So I want to go back to something you and Q just said, Rod. This is a different offense without Sam Ellinger, who is now making his way out of the tunnel after heading back towards the locker room. You see that bandage on his right hand, so it looks like maybe that's where the blood was originating from. They are run heavy with Bouchelle in there behind that old line. Yeah, run heavy by giving the ball to their backs. And that was Trey Watson that time because the best running back on the team right now is Ellinger. Yeah. And with him out, the rushing attack changes. He was their leading rusher yep. last season. And they really haven't had a big play. Not a 20-yard pass yet, and that's a big part of their offense. Michelle, deep shot, overthrown for L.J. Humphrey. Chris Miller in coverage. Yeah, this, this Texas offense has become, on the ground, Ellinger power running. Yep. And then with those big receivers on the outside, big plays. So you take your shots. Now, when you don't get those big plays, a little frustration starts to set in. With receivers, you know, receivers always want the ball and they want it down the field. Their longest pass play has been 16 yards. And that was the first pass of this drive that started with Shane Bouchelle. They've been running mostly on this series. Back-to-back -back passes by Bouchelle. Throwing it up for Colin Johnson. And the flag is thrown with Derek Thomas in coverage. Yeah, that, that's a good call. Thomas is 6'3", facing a pretty tall receiver at 6'6". Initially had good position, but got his hands on him too long. Defense number 23. You see how you've affected me. Spot, uh, I'm actually before I met you. I, I'm listening to you give the benefit of the doubt to yeah, a wide before, receiver. Before I met you, there was no such thing as pass interference. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a little ticky tack. But, was, I, but I would actually tend to agree. But with he extended that, the arm a little bit. It's a little yeah. ticky tack. I normally wouldn't call that, but it's legit. Pressure coming from Baylor. Bouchelle finds Johnson. He beats Thomas inside the 30-yard line. So typically, Sam Ellinger is in the game. Shane Bouchelle's on the sideline with the headset, and they have great communication. Now, Q, those tables have flipped. Yeah, Ellinger walked back out, took off his helmet, put it down on the bench, and then put the headset on. Incomplete. I expected, uh, Adam, I expected him to pick up a football and start throwing. That's not the case right now, as you see the bandage on his right hand. Yeah, I, I wonder if, I mean, obviously we don't know the severity of it just yet, but they're leaving Shane Bouchelle in for the time being, letting Ellinger get settled for now. He's right next to Tom Herman. This is the storyline here in Austin for the opening 15 minutes. That's a good handoff to Watson. This now, is this such a ridiculous running play. Yeah, I was just going to say. There's, there is nobody to block. Watch the right side of this line. Yeah. Look how far they go down the field before they even find a defender. Yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking, I'm like, you know this offensive line is different and needs to play differently with this quarterback in the game. 
and they need to impose their will. Good extension by Watson. Great job to run him down by Blake Lynch, the outside linebacker. That is great coverage when you've got a guy like Watson, who is a great receiver out of the backfield and can get away from you. And Baylor has come up with another stop here as Texas lines up for a field goal. You told me that Baylor needed to not give up the big play. That's been the case for the most part so far in this game. This is the end of the first quarter. So Dicker will have the chance on the other side. But Charlie Brewer did not get the offer from Texas playing against the Horns as the Bears in front for one. On ESPN Plus, you can start your free trial of the service today. It's right through the ESPN app or go to ESPNplus.com. Cameron Dicker to start the second quarter with a 35-yard try. Two trips to the red zone with Shane Bouchelle. Two field goals for Texas and a visit to Adnan Burke in the studio. Be the biggest game in the Pac-12 this season, Washington no and Oregon. Yep, yep. Well, let's take a look at how Texas performs on this series defensively. They were not good on that last touchdown drive by Baylor. Talk about missed tackles and the like. They weren't good. Trevor White and Chris Platt back to return for Baylor. Well, so we told you about a huge Pac-12 game on ABC right now. When that one's done, big house. Number 15, Wisconsin. Number 12, Michigan. Interesting matchup of styles tonight. 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app with Chris, Kirk, and Maria. I think this is when Michigan starts to make their move. Yep. Yep, defense plays well. Patterson gives them great quarterback play tonight. They beat a good Wisconsin team, and they just roll on, I think, until they set up with Sparty and then also with uh, Ohio State. State. at the end of the year? Yeah. In Columbus. Now for Texas, the challenge to tackle better. Nine missed tackles on that 12-play touchdown drive last time. And Brewer will sling it backwards, it looked like, momentarily for Squirrel Williams, but it'll be ruled as an incomplete forward pass. That's happened a couple of times already in this game. Very close plays that could have potentially been backwards passes, and I got to tell you, if it's a lateral, which is even, that's also considered a backwards pass. That, I think, could have been a live ball. Yeah, but they blew the whistle on it. And, they, so and, that, and that's that it. You cannot that go it. back and review yeah. that now. That play is dead. Well, that's a break for Baylor right there. And the first incompletion for Brewer, who is under fire and has to fling it away, looking for Treston Ebner. Gary Johnson bringing some heat that time. You wanted a little bit of a response after all those missed tackles? There's a couple right there. Well, you see them. They're bringing a little heat now. You're trying to get the energy up a little bit if you're, you know, Orlando, the defensive coordinator. Bring a little energy, a little juice for the defense and bringing some pressure. Got that done. And now if you're Baylor, you're thinking, how are they going to play Mims down at the bottom of the screen? How do they play him? Single or double him? There he is. Brewer maneuvering, launching away. The heat from the Texas defense enough to get off the field. Anthony Wheeler on the pressure. Yeah, he, he took a look at Mims, but Texas 
doubled him as expected. Look at this. There's one guy short. He releases him to the safety behind him. So Boyd Short had a safety behind him just to cover two double up over there. Brandon Jones was the guy sticking back there for anything deep. And Brewer had to look away. Well, a very quick three and out with three incompletions. Jamison gets drilled, but a penalty marker comes flying in as J.T. Woods applied the hit on his fellow freshman, Jamison. Matt Rule going, what was the flag for? Reggie Smith, our lead official today. There is no foul on the play for kick catch interference. There's a timeout on the field. I think it's the right call. That's a good see deal. It. Yeah. He didn't signal a fair catch. Woods came in with a clean hit. Sam Ellinger still has the headset on early in the second quarter. Now at Texas in this season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the best student section of the year, the Texas Longhorn student section already on the national watch list. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Shane Bouchelle still out there for the Texas offense as Keontae Ingram runs it on first down, Q. Texas officials just told me that Sam Ellinger has a shoulder injury and will be reevaluated at halftime. If you're just joining us, he left the field earlier in the first quarter with what appeared to be a cut. He had blood. Mandatory, he comes off the field. He went into the locker room, emerged 20 minutes later. Now we're being told that it's also a shoulder injury. Yeah, we were curious, wow, too, yeah. because, I mean, we thought, all right, he's got a little blood, maybe a cut. You'd think he would go back on the field. That makes a lot more sense. Great stuff, Q. Here's little Jordan Humphrey. Not much there. So the one thing that you think about with Ellinger is that he, he carries the ball so much. He takes a lot of punishment. He was injured an awful lot last year, missed a lot of games. Yep. This offense now designed around him, and he took some shots today. You know, so you wonder just can he make it through a season being the primary ball carrier and the quarterback and taking all those hits? Last year, Bouchelle or Ellinger were hurt in nine of the 13 Texas games. And Bouchelle staying alive in the pocket to find a man in Andrew Beck for the first down. Hold on to the ball at the 34-yard line. Pocket presence. Bouchelle showed you his pocket presence as he gets in a lot of trouble here. It collapses around him. He does not panic, keeps his composure, and finds his tight end Beck. And he still took a hit on that play, too, to your point, Rob. And now Baylor is going to use a timeout. Baylor calls for a first timeout. Bouchelle, you know what type of toughness he carries. He might need it at spades today. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, and McDonald's. One of the great reasons to come to Austin, Texas. Austin City limits the last couple of weekends. Paul McCartney played last night. I believe Metallica, Ron Gilmore's favorite band, is playing tonight. Yeah, but how about the student fans who are here instead of there? I, I give them a lot of credit yeah, for that. They've changed everything around here to really make being a, a student attending a game a good deal. Now just make the tickets free for them, and we're, we're good. I'm gonna, I just wanted to check that off the list. I I'm a make populist, sure. <laughs> man, a populist. Shane Bouchelle. A wobbly throw, and Kalen Barnes leapt up into the air for Baylor's defense. Rod, that throw brings up questions. What can Texas get done with Shane Bouchelle? You know, they're two wide receivers, Colin Johnson and L.J. Humphrey. Great downfield threats. Yep. I think they have to go to the underneath and intermediate throws with Bouchelle. Yeah, the yeah, but you know about the middle of the field, Q. It is dark and full of terrors. <laughs> you got to be careful in there. But the, the long passing game is not the same because Bouchelle doesn't have the same arm strength as Ellinger. 
That one gets knocked down. Jamison Houston off the corner came in and knocked it away. Third down coming up as we check in with Adnan. Oh, baby, it's begun. The weirdness of week seven is starting to creep in to this college football Saturday. Third and ten. Had it last year. Yep, this weekend, a year ago. Not a single defensive lineman with his hand on the ground. Yep. Who's rushing? Well, they're bringing heat from different spots. Bouchelle throwing wide for Cade Brewer, and it's incomplete. And now a little bit of nervousness in this building watching this Texas this, offense. This is exactly what Rule wanted. A slow, ugly, dirty, if you will, game where things aren't smooth and easy for Texas. Not the big plays. Having Ellinger out takes away the deep ball. And so they're adjusting on the fly. And surprisingly, Baylor getting to third down situations where they can be aggressive on defense. They've been heating Texas up a whole lot in this game. Ooh, the freshman punter, Buczewski, got it off, but it was deflected. Fair catch from Trevor White. Uh, Reggie Smith was right there, the referee, and he said he got a piece of it. Tyquan Thornton was the man who made contact. Because fans were, were clamoring for, oh, that's running into the kicker. That should be a penalty. But there was contact made with the ball there. That is a clean play by Thornton. Reggie Smith could not have been in a better position to hear and see it. He's just out of your frame. And immediately, he started signaling that there was contact with the ball. If there's no contact with the ball there, there's grounds for a penalty yep. against Baylor. Yep. Now Baylor takes over at its own 16 with Jalen Hurd on the catch. Drilled by Chris Boyd. Just a run pass oh, option. Oh, uh -oh. oh, here we go. Here it is. Things starting to get a little chippy in Austin, Texas. Well, Hurd's not backing down from anybody or anything. You're talking about a guy who was a running back in the SEC at Tennessee, ran for 1,000 yards multiple times. Played at 6'4", 240 plus pounds, has slimmed down to 220, but still the mentality of a running back when he catches that ball. I count four flags, four different officials immediately threw the laundry when things started to escalate. And you saw Matt Rule bring Jalen Hurd right back over to the sideline and get him out of it. Well, you're not going to intimidate Hurd. No. But Matt Rule wanted to make sure nothing else happened. After the play, there were fouls by both teams. And sportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 33. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number five. Those fouls will offset. These are both players first unsportsmanlike foul. If either one of them get another unsportsmanlike, they're ejected from the game. Heard on the catch. Brought down by Boyd. And 33, Gary Johnson is the man who got tagged with the other issue, and that's why. Yeah. Hurt even put a little yeah, uh, hurt, forearm yeah. into him, maybe a fist into the helmet. Yeah. He could easily have been flagged for a little bit more. Friday. Second and six, and it's Josh Fleeks. And Devontae Davis is there for the stop. And the juice is in the building right now in a one-point game. Yeah, the crowd is feeling it. Defense is turning up the intensity. Q, I can feel it. The Texas defense is all about smoke and mirrors under Todd Orlando. If they show pressure, they'll back out. If they don't show pressure, they usually blitz. If they overload a side, they're using that to distract you. They typically come from the other direction. Oh, the Orlando, a master at pressure and then generating interceptions. Will Brewer pick it up? That's the question. He's going to run it, and Anthony Wheeler was not full. Uh, the senior out of Skyline High School in Dallas, Texas, has a wee bit more speed than Brewer and chased him down.
He's just out of your frame. He sees it. He's a bit of a spy there. And he goes to the right place, anticipating where Burr will be. That's a really good job. The senior linebackers for Texas, Johnson and Wheeler, with the back-to-back -back tackles for loss. Oh, and that's off the side of the foot of Galitz. Absolutely shanked, and Texas will have it inside the 45. Six yards for Galitz, who leads the Big 12 in punting average. Well, this is almost as good as a turnover for Texas. You get a good defensive stop, you get a shake, you get to start your possession in Baylor territory. This is as close to a sudden change as you can get without an actual turnover. How does how does Texas take advantage of this? They know the deep ball hasn't been there. They really want to get to it, though. On first down, it is Ingram. Works his way to the 40-yard line. Bouchelle. Deep downfield. Good effort by Brennan Eagles, but excellent coverage by Derek Thomas as well. Well, we keep talking about the shots down the field that they want to take. Baylor is aware of this. This is great coverage by Derek Thomas. He's six foot three, not intimidated by the tall receivers, and he really cut that one off very well. Third down and eight. This would be pressure time. Baylor has done that on third and seven, third and eight plus. And nobody's got a hand down. Here they come. And there goes Bouchelle. Clay Johnston back in the game with the impactful play on defense. Well, you could almost know that they had to do this because that's where the tendency was coming from. Third down and more than five or six yards. They're bringing pressure. Johnston comes from the outside. No one picks him up. Overload. Great job. Cosme was the tackle on that time on that side and had no shot at him. Oh, it's dropped by Buchevsky. Good job just to recover it and get the kick off inside the 25. Back to Adnan Verk. It's all happening. It's all happening today. Did you sprinkle <laughs> dust this morning? What is going on here? This was the week last season in yep. college football that all of a sudden things began to shift. The undefeated team started to suffer some losses. On first down, nothing there for Hasty. And the Baylor offense has been struggling mightily as of late. They've accounted for yeah. no yards on the last two series, Rod. Yeah, yeah, really. You know, a little bit more aggressive on first down for Texas, trying to get Brewer into a box in the later downs. Prior to the snap, Baylor calls their second timeout of the half. We'll step aside as well. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. A look at Wendy's fresh look at the Big 12, giving fans more on the hottest topic today. The playoff predictor has seen some separation now with those five teams in the hunt. Notre Dame and Georgia getting a little bit of they're a not, push today. They're not going undefeated. Our research department said 
Those five, a 2% chance. Brewer finds Hurd on second and long. They finally connect for Evan a bigger Marshall. play. Yeah, he was in the slot that time and just runs this out route. Nice move. Locke is the nickel back that he separated from there. That's a big play for Baylor. It's 26 yards, their longest of the day. A little bit of heat for Platt on that throw from Brewer. And Rod, you think about both of these teams and the mismatches that both slots create. Jalen Hurd, as you said, He's just gigantic for a slot at 6'4", 215. LJ Humphrey for Texas, the same scenario. You know, this is not the typical Big 12 slot guys. You know, 5'9", 175 pounds of lightning. Well, Q, that's why any time they see a man-to-man -man matchup with Mims or Hurd, they want to take advantage of it. And on the flip side, the same thing for Texas. Not a lot of room for Hasty, and Texas's defense rallies. You know, back to the national picture, you know, those five teams that are undefeated, and everybody was saying you're going to have five undefeated teams. We haven't had, according to our research department, five major undefeated season uh, teams finish the season that way since 1949. It it's not going to happen. It is hard to do with that many teams. It's not going to happen. And this weekend, like last year, might be the reason why. So we're going to see what? A one loss? Maybe a one. May, do we see a two loss team get into the playoff this year? No. Nope. That's, that's still not going to happen. Nope. All right. Brewer fires again, and this time it's Mims. Q, you pointed it out two, three plays ago. Mims and Hurd both get opportunities to move the chains. Now they're both playmakers. Great size. Catch radius with Mims is just insane and Brewer was given time in the pocket he had a clear lane and he delivered a strike this is a crucial drive for Baylor whose offense had been stagnant yeah and Mims is not afraid to go over the middle he fears no man but he does fear his grandmother <laughs> that is the one person who will get his attention always Granny is very close with his family Oh, Brewer lost the football and rescued it back at the 43-yard line. He got helped up by his center, Sam Tecklenburg. Just yeah. a little bit wide. Yep, and kind of took his eye off it for a second. We were talking about Mims and his grandmother. His grandmother worked at every school he went to. She was on top of everything he did, and so even to this day, it's like, hey, I got, I'm pleasing Grandma. Here's Hurd. And he wow. gets tackled towards the sticks. He's got the first down. There she is, Glinda Mims, the grandmother of Denzel. But that is the inspiration of Denzel's life. Junior out of Dangerfield, Texas. Yeah, no fear on the football field. But when Grandma says something, <laughs> Absolutely. all in. He is a crucial piece to this Baylor offense. He may be the best receiver in the Big 12. I, I, I could make an argument easily for yep. it. He, Hollywood Brown, Gary Jennings, Colin Johnson, uh, Lil Jordan Humphrey. His ability on the deep ball is outstanding, and he's not afraid to catch over the middle either. A little bit of space for Ebner. Up to the 23. Interesting to see Baylor run on that left side. That's been the area where they've had the most trouble this season, Q. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, when you look at this offensive line, you know, they have been able to run it in the red zone. It's one of the reasons why their stats have been so successful. But running left has not been their forte. Brewer. Had that one deflected. He was looking for Mims. That'll bring up third down. Chris Nelson up front. Well, Texas defensively, the last couple of times, they have been double covering the wide receivers, playing soft with two safeties back, not to be beaten by those big, tall guys outside. If that continues, Brewer's going to have to find a way to go over the middle and stay away from the outside. 
And it looks like the same sort of defense, at least the initial setup. Two safeties hanging back to give a little help. Now it switches. After all that, the flags come flying in. Full start, offense, multiple players, five yard penalty, third down. Felt like some guys were getting antsy after that play clock had been turning for quite some time. Yeah, like everybody. Yep. Can't take a sack here if you're Brewer. Right. You don't want to get out of field goal range for Connor Martin. Based on what Texas is showing, I would expect flat 14 to be the guy he looks for. Brewer is just going to launch Whoa. towards the end zone, and it's incomplete. Tyquan Thornton going extension. Brewer just launching it towards the orange paint. Well, he went for the freshman, who's 6'3", and he has a shot at this and should have come up with it. A perfectly thrown ball. And he is the one guy Texas did not double, didn't expect them to try to go to him. Good read by Brewer. Just unfortunate that Thornton wasn't able to come up with it. So 46 yards for Connor Martin. After he boomed the game-winning field goal to beat Kansas State a week ago, he's able to drill it to put Baylor in front by four. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. We thank you, Allstate. Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Opened in November of 1924. Baylor has not beaten a top 10 Texas team here at DKR since 1951. Back to Adnan Verk in the studio. Tight one there, tight one here, and Sam Ellinger continues to wear the headset. If you're just joining us, Ellinger played the first 10 snaps of this game, then left due to what Quint Kesnick reported to us was a shoulder injury, had his hand cut up on the play before he left as well. It's been Shane Bouchelle at quarterback ever since for Texas, and all they've been able to muster is a couple of field goals in the red zone so far. Well, the offense has changed. Ellinger is the focal point of the rushing attack. Bouchel, the quarterback, has one rush in the first half. We're going to go with Ingram here, breaking one loose. He's got the first down out across the 40 for Texas. Well, and that's the answer. The offensive line has to pick it up. There is a flag on the play. But the running backs have to step up because the quarterback run game is now off the table for Texas. The other part that's been missing is the deep ball. When Ellinger is in there, they'll take several shots downfield of the big receivers. They've done it once tonight and haven't completed Personal it. Personal foul, face mask, defense number one against the non-ball carrier. 15 yards at it to the end of the run, first down. For Kedrick Vaughns with uh, extracurricular on the face mask, so tack on 15 more. Texas into Baylor territory at the 44-yard line. Michelle, one on one, looking for the big man, Colin Johnson. What a catch! Touchdown, Texas. Uh, credit Shane Bouchelle for giving Johnson a chance to make a play, and this is what he does. He's six foot six. 
at the end of this play, he's going to rock Thomas a little bit and get up and take. Pushes off a little bit, and then Thomas kind of gives up on it when he's pushed off and complains to the official. Official's going to let him play. If you're a DB, you want interference on that? Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, you can't at all take any playoff. You know what you do? If he's pushing off, you grab and hang on. But he didn't hang on. He got pushed off of it. And talking to uh, their defensive coordinator, Phil Snow, before the game, and he says, his guys have been told, these receivers will push off. you got to stay with them. And that's a cue. That was Thomas not hanging in there and being aggressive enough. Are these lanky receivers, they get their hands on you with their long arms. You're not going to win that battle. And a 50-50 throw becomes an 80-20 throw. You got to give Tom Herman and his staff credit, though. They got out to the logo. They got a little more aggressive. Yep. And they finally took a shot. Yeah, and when you know you have aggressive receivers to the ball like that who will push off, you have to grab back and hang on and hope they let you play and call it mutual combat. If they don't, you take the 15-yard penalty instead of the six points. Yeah, you don't want to give up the touchdown no. in that spot. And I, I guarantee you, Snow is is talking to those DBs over there about exactly that. Back to Adnan Burke in the studio. It's getting crazy here, bud. Thanks, A.B. You know, I want to go back to that touchdown play and show you a bit of Thomas at the end. Look at this. He's, he's not in bad shape right there. He's getting pushed off. Now, make the tackle. Don't complain to the official. Don't give up. Make the tackle. That ball was at the nine-yard line. You still have a play to play. Finish the play. There's Platt. Platt down by Boyd. And this is why... Herman tells his quarterbacks, give your receivers a chance. Put the ball up there, give them a chance to make a play. They will. They are dynamic. They are unique. And the big play that Baylor had avoided so far in this game, yep. that was the first really big play, a 44-yard touchdown. Brewer has that one deflected. A little bit of pressure from the nickelback. P.J. Locke. Now we talked about Brewer's story earlier and how Texas didn't recruit him, didn't offer him a scholarship. Lots of schools didn't offer. SMU offered, but he didn't get many offers. And part of it was because people thought he was too small, too short. He was about six feet tall or under, under that. He's grown to 6'1 now, but you can see, get your hands up, you can still deflect some passes. Can they hear at the line of scrimmage? Brewer lost the football. Looks like that Christoph Henley, the tight end, jumped on top of it. The Brewer lost it with Brecken Hager coming from the backside. Well, there is a need to remain composed, but a good effort by Hager coming off the corner of the edge and wrapping around Third Brewer, knocking that ball out. Taylor calls their timeout the half. 30 seconds. And Brewer struck us as a cool customer yesterday. Very emotional situation for him, considering his ties and history. Will the clock operator please reset to 3.53. 3.53, please. Baylor used their timeout here. 3.43 to go. There is the Brewer family. Robert, his father, a former Texas quarterback. To his right is Michael, who was a quarterback at both Texas Tech and Virginia Tech. His sister Katie, his mom Laura, the whole Brewer clan in familiar territory. They know this place pretty well. That last play will not count. There was a timeout called. We heard the Baylor bench call for timeout. It was announced, but it was announced before the play. After all of that, apparently the whistle came before the third down and eight. 
So Brewer gets new life, but Jalen Hurd drops the ball. So after all that, the Brecken Hager forced fumble, the knockaway. Apparently, the timeout was called before that third down play. And Rod asks, can you hear? I thought for a split second there may have been a whistle right at that snap, Q. There was confusion on the field. I come after this punt if I'm Texas, after Galas shanked the last one. Well, it's bobbled and controlled by Jamison, and he's going to lose some yardage. Let's go back to Adnan Verk in the studio. Once you hit your talk back, I went out. I don't know why. Am I back now? Okay. All right. All right. So now Memphis has the lead on UCF. <laughs> Another undefeated team is facing some things. I can't believe it. This morning you were saying, I, I think this could be like exactly a year ago, week seven, 2017, when we had all the upsets. And it is starting to look that way. It is brewing right now. Texas starts this series from the 30-yard line. Bouchel too tall for Devin Duvernay. A little extra shove from Kalen Barnes at the end of that. Ingram swallowed up by Bernard. Third down coming up for Texas. And it's a, a key third down. You really don't want to turn the ball back over to Baylor as you get close to the half. Texas was getting some momentum with that last drive, last touchdown. So it's a big third down here again. And remember, big receivers in the slot. Humphreys in the lower part of the screen can work to the middle of the field. Just a four-man rush this time. Bouchel to Johnson. First down. And a little more out to the 49. The penalty marker back at the 30. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 90. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Tyrone Hunt with a miscue for Baylor for 15 more. You could count penalties as big plays that have hurt Baylor, moved Texas into good position, and this was the area of the field where they took a shot to the end zone before. Wouldn't be surprised if they get the single coverage they want to go back at it. They're looking deep. Bouchelle overthrew his man, and it's picked off by Jamison Houston, but now it's going to be ruled incomplete. Jamison Houston, a physical corner, getting some more time. Thought he had the pick. Matt Rule asking about it as well. Well, Houston was in perfect position. They anticipated the deep throw. The question is, does he have maintain control through hitting the ground? He might have a catch here. It looks like that hand is underneath the ball. Now, the ball can move while he hits the ground so long as he maintains control. He's got a hand still underneath the ball I think that's a catch I would lean catch here I would yeah. lean that's an interception what's interesting about this Rod the ruling on the field was incomplete and if there's no indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field then it's going to have to stay right. as an incompletion but I think you and I both believe when, that the control was there well and whenever I see the hand between the ground and the ball that tells me there's some control unless that ball moves away. You can have the ball touch the ground. You can have the ball move a little. Is there control? Hand underneath. And that ball never leaves his midsection. Uh, I, I mean, I, to me, I think that's indisputable video yeah. evidence. He maintained control through the process. I think if you and I are in the replay booth, I think you and I are overturning the call. Yeah. Remember, Texas, part of the reason they've been so much better over the last five games is the fact that their turnover margin has been excellent. They hadn't had a single turnover over their last three games. Yeah. And again, the key for me 
on that replay is where the hand is located. After further review, the rolling on the field of an incomplete pass is confirmed. It'll be second down. Wow, they, they confirmed it, which is surprising to me because I would tend to agree with you. I think that there was control maintained throughout the process. What's completing the process? You have possession all the way through, control, you're in bounds, and the ability to do something common to the game with an element of time, including tucking the ball or and maintaining over, control yeah. and rolling over. Well, again, over that the hand underneath the ball was key for me. So now another opportunity for Texas. And Ingram has a good run with some help from LJ Humphrey on the perimeter. Baylor has not been good against the run this season, giving up an average of six yards a carry. Look at the huge lanes that were opened up on this perimeter run. Bouchelle. Again, Shane Bouchelle has taken the majority of the snaps today. This is his first appearance of the season after 19 starts over the previous two years with Sam Ellinger sidelined with a shoulder issue. Bouchelle has been in there. There goes Ingram. And Keontae Ingram has a first down inside the five. A great job of catching a little bit of a slant from the edge. They caught Baylor rushing inside and had the right play call to get outside. Ingram. Tyrone Hunt makes the stop. You go back to that play just before the last play here. Look at the slant inside. You see Thompson 48 go inside and that gave them no edge. And you always have to have an edge player or else things like that happen. That was the longest Texas run of the day at 18 yards. A minute 20, all three timeouts. Uh, look who's the quarterback. And here comes LJ Humphrey in the Wildcat. Touchdown, Longhorns. That is a grown man taking that <laughs> Wildcat snap. Six foot four, 220 pounds. A little bigger than Bouchelle, who could be confused with Matt Saracen of Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Tom Herman has called Lil Jordan Humphrey the Swiss Army Knife. He threw for a touchdown in the Red River rivalry last week. He's caught four touchdowns this year and now bangs it in with that big body for a rushing touchdown to put Texas up 10. Well, tonight on ABC, a battle at the big house. It's going to be a raucous atmosphere for a top 15 Big Ten matchup. Number 12 Michigan, that excellent defense, that secondary that can lock in on you against number 15 Wisconsin. ABC at 7.30 Eastern Time and the ESPN app. All in on Michigan and Patterson at quarterback. They, uh, they just showed the McConaughey cam. That's why the crowd is up. That means Matthew McConaughey has made his appearance on the Texas sideline. Come on, give it to me. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're just going to keep on living. We're going to take a 10-point lead. <laughs> oh, those I think you owe me dinner for that one. That's way, awesome, Matt. man. Loving it. Oh, Baylor out to the 25-yard line. And now it gets chippy again. Mm. More penalty flags get thrown. And the officials have to come in and separate for a second time. Well, Baylor had control of this game much of the first quarter, much of the second quarter. And Texas has reasserted control the last two drives, offensively and on defense. Sometimes a little chippiness is okay, but 
Officials don't want it to get too far out of hand. We had flags earlier when uh, I think it was Hurd and, and Gary Johnson yeah. got mixed up after a play. They warned them. Are we getting more warnings here? It's a Big 12 crew with Reggie Smith in charge. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team number 46. It'll be a 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, first down. You know, I, I think you could make a strong case as we take a look at this. So you There's see 46, the, yep. That's Joseph Osai, the freshman from Conroe, Texas. And... Uh, He's the one who got flagged for it. He yeah. kind of got caught after uh, he got a little bit of a hard hit. He retaliated, and he was the one that got caught for it. Well, I wonder, did they point that the right way? Yeah, that's what I'm questioning, because if they called it on Osai. He said receiving team, but called it on 46 yeah. of the kicking team. Let's see if he's got a correction Any here. Luck, Glenn? Correction. The foul was on number 28 for Baylor. Will penalize half the distance to the goal. Yeah, that seems from right. The yeah. Touchback. Yeah, that's, spot. I think it'll be Baylor's ball first. One of the 10. officials was telling him the number of a right. player that was was pushed. It's Abram Smith that's going to get flagged for Baylor here. That's the right call. So Baylor's problem, the second part of this second half, has been penalties. Q. Yeah. It gets killed them. Right, oh, nearly 50 yards of penalties in the last six or so minutes. Yeah, that's the eighth accepted penalty, Q, against Baylor. And they've been big ones. You know, kept drives alive, shortened the field for Texas, backed up the Baylor offense. The penalties in the last six, seven minutes have just been horrific for Baylor. Ebner trying to stay on his feet, and Gary Johnson with the initial contact tripped him up. But you have to decide if you are rule how how you want to play this. Texas calls their first time out of the half, 30 seconds. Well, we know how Texas is going to play it now. They want yep. that they want that ball back with some they, time. Texas wants to force a punt and will use their timeouts accordingly. I think if you are rule, you're trying to get out of here. You need one first down to avoid having to punt. And so as much as he may want to just kind of slam this thing in the middle and be done with it, that might not be good enough. While we have a moment, we give you today's Affleck. trivia question. Texas in the AP Top 10 for the first time in more than 2,900 days. What's the longest time an FBS school has gone between top 10 appearances? That's our Aflac trivia question. 132 straight pulls. Texas was out of the top 10. On target for Mims. Close to the sticks. It's actually heard there oh, heard, with that catch. That's the same play in which he dropped the pass on that last series that would have gotten them a first down. Again, he is a converted running back to wide receiver and knows how to take a hit out there. Looking for Platt this time. Was it intercepted? Yes, it was. Caden Stearns, fourth pick of his freshman season already. Brewer leads this one short a bit to the inside. Gives the safety. Stearns a chance to come over and make a play. He was trying to get it to Mims. Leaves this inside short. That ball's got to be higher and outside. I'm sorry, he was trying to get it to Platt. That ball's got to be higher and towards the sideline so that either Platt gets it or no one gets it. Against a two deep coverage like that, you leave that ball in the field of play, just outside those numbers, that's hunting ground for the safeties. He's a star in the making, Rod, nicknamed the Wolf of DKR. Mm. He's got a Wolf for our, a forearm tattoo. Well, they've had a few safeties here, and Earl, Earl Thomas, Thomas Michael out, yep. Griffin, Aaron Ross, Michael Huff. There is a tradition of great safety play at Texas. Yeah, Stearns might be the next one. Baylor with a delay. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Offense whistled 
for the delay. Meanwhile, the defense, Baylor, yelling to their sideline. They had a, a member of their secondary still sitting on the bench. He didn't realize that there was a sudden change, Rod. And yeah, they've, they've kind of fallen apart the last six, seven minutes. Blitz on Bouchelle. And turns it into a gain. Texas still has two timeouts. This is clock management. This is where the head coach is in charge. Side of 30 seconds now. Another blitz from Baylor. Bouchelle, wobbly pass, incomplete for Johnson. Now you got two timeouts. You had about 40 seconds. Now you're down to 16. I think you managed this better than that. And this is all the head coach's responsibility. The clock management into the half, this is on Herman. And whether he wants to be aggressive or not, he chose to be a little bit more deliberate. But I think the last two series that Texas had showed you they can make some plays. Yeah. So I, I would be taking chances instead of thinking, eh, i got to be conservative here. Baylor brings heat. A screen pass for Jamison. And Jamison has the first down and steps out of bounds. Now, you got eight seconds. You got time to run one play and still kick a field goal. You've got two timeouts. This is a little bit far just to kick the field goal. And, and this is right at the cusp of the yeah. range. And because you have the two timeouts, you can use the entire field to get the, ne the next five or ten yards you need. Baylor gets the ball to start the second half. Quick out. And they'll step out with Humphrey right near the 30. Four seconds left. And Cameron Dicker will come out to give Baylor the lead. Yeah, see, Herman oh, had... see, oh, they're going to bring him out. They're going to yeah. bring him back. Well, they don't have much of a choice here. Yeah. You got four seconds. It was like, it was like hey, you got you to send him out there you know, you, unless you want to go for a Hail Mary. 47 yards. Yep, 47 yards. This would be a career long. He won it a week ago, and he's perfect so far today. I think he managed that clock perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Hindsight Gilmore will have more on the other side. 23 to 10, Texas. Back to Adnan, Jesse, and Joey for the halftime report. Back to Austin, Texas, ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation 4. And a 13-point Texas advantage into the second half. Sam Ellinger was injured in the opening half of play, in the opening quarter, in fact, dealing with a shoulder issue. He was taking some hits early on in this game, and that forced Tom Herman's hand. After Ellinger had to leave, Shane Bouchelle would eventually come in and replace Ellinger. You see the grimace as he was pushing up that right arm. Yeah, it, it appears to be a right shoulder injury. Don't know exactly when it happened. Also, a cut, there was some blood. And you see only four or five passes since he only played 10 plays. And Bouchelle came in. Took a while to get going, but they did establish the deep ball late in the second quarter. Got to their offense a little bit more, but what's been gone from the Texas offense, the quarterback run game. Quarterback power sweep, the zone read, all that has kind of been thrown out the window. Now Texas relying more on the handoff to the running backs, and Bouchelle has gotten comfortable now, gotten into the flow, throwing the deep ball. Fair catch signaled by Chris Platt inside the 25, so the ball comes to the 25. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick as well, shifted a little bit over to Baylor. Obviously, we know that at times this year, their offense has been really good. Can they do it now and take advantage of what Texas is giving well, them? They fell apart in the last half of the second quarter. Prior to that, they were moving the ball. They were really good on third down. But now the question becomes, can they protect Brewer again? If they are able to protect him, he has shown the ability to deliver the ball and also to make the big play down the field. But that's the question. Can they protect him? On first down, 
It'll be Jalen Hurd on the run, Q. Yeah, we need to run the ball, the words of Matt Rule. And you've seen on that first down, they go tail back an eye formation and give the ball to Jalen Hurd. He also pointed to, to this young team looking ahead. What's next more important than what just happened as Hurd takes it off right tackle for another six yards? You see his mentality coming through on this first series, Adam. It's a team that was stung by penalties and drops in that late second quarter. Q, they ran for 24 yards, and now you saw the shift. They brought in Cody Ballard at fullback. They have an extra tight end, and they're putting Jalen Hurd, the former Tennessee running back, who's been taking carries the last few weeks, back in as a tailback. Another run for Hurd, this time bottled up for a yard. Now remember, Hurd left Tennessee because he didn't want to be a running back. Too much punishment. He figured his body wouldn't hold up. He wants to play in the NFL and thought a switch to wide receiver would help. Tennessee refused to allow him to move to wide receiver. But Baylor has said, no problem, wide receiver. And Hurd in return has said, if you need me in the backfield, I'm all in. But I want to be a receiver, but I'm a team guy. I'll help out. And you see him line it up now as a running back as he did at Tennessee. Now he's back up in the slot in that almost standard four receiver look for Baylor. They'll find Platt, and he's got the first down to the 49-yard line. Jalen Hurt, he did say some interesting things to Bleacher Report about the shift over into that different position. I didn't just do this on a whim. I researched it. Running backs last three and a half years in the NFL. Wide receivers can last 10 or more years. They're valued more than running backs in the NFL. I can play this game longer as a receiver. It's not a position change. It's a life change, he said. Brewer under pressure. Great job by Chris Nelson forcing Brewer into a tough spot. And Jones actually came up with the catch at yeah. the end. But the pressure here is fantastic. I mean, you just look there, you see Chris Nelson just bowling right through what was going to be a good block or tried to be a good block by Tecklenburg. Couldn't hold him off. Hasty. <laughs> Swallowed up. Chris Nelson again. He's living in the backfield. One of the captains of this Texas defense who had to replace a pretty good one in Puna Ford at nose. Yeah, watch him just blow this up. He gets into the backfield, splits that block or attempted block. Through Morgan, number 63, couldn't get in front of him. Nelson just too quick. Now these are the third down situations that Baylor converted in the first half. Gary Johnson closed out the play. Well, bad matchup. You got Hager coming around from the edge, being picked up by a running back. That's not a good deal. He just collapses the pocket that way, and that allows Gary Johnson to come in from the other side. But a linebacker like Hager on a small back, yeah, that pocket's going to fall apart. Yep. <laughs> Jamison back to return. Galitz, he's had a shank in this game, but he's one of the best punters in this league, and he does a great job pinning Texas inside the 10. So first drive of the second half belongs to Shane Bouchelle, Q. Adam, uh, Texas officials came over and told me that Sam Ellinger is done for the afternoon with a shoulder injury. So it is Shane Bouchelle's show the rest of the way for the Texas Longhorns. His first appearance of the season in this game after making 19 starts combined over the last two seasons. A lot of people remember Shane Bouchelle, Notre Dame game, 2016. That was the whole start of the Texas is back, folks. That we remember so well. It was Shane at the helm for a big offensive night. He would start every game in 2016 for the Texas Longhorns. 
Hand off to the shifty Ingram. Penalty markers flying in. Well, Bouchelle is the son of Steve Bouchelle, Major League Baseball player, great player for a number of years, and now a Major League Baseball coach. So he comes from a professional family and was recruited by Charlie Strong. Holding offense, number 56. Happy distance to the goal. Replay second down. And then was locked in a battle after the coaching change with Ellinger, his sophomore season. Ellinger is much more of the type of quarterback that fits the offense that Herman wants to run with a lot of quarterback run game. So this offense doesn't quite fit Bouchelle the same way. And remember, this is his first game of the season. Right back to the ground with Ingram. Johnston on the stop. So the first game of the season means he is eligible, so long as he plays less than four games, four right. games or less. New redshirt rule. To have this year preserved, and he could redshirt. And Herman was quite open about, hey, he's trying to be fair and open with Bouchelle. If he wants to transfer, he will do everything he can to help him, and he won't put him in a bad spot, which is why he told him that he lost a job early in the season so that they could plan if he wanted to leave. Baylor bringing pressure. Bouchelle for Johnson. First down to the 20-yard line. He's not thinking about leaving now. He's all in about quarterbacking and getting this win, starting to really get into the flow of things. You saw it in the, the last five, six minutes of the first half, and he's flowing again right now. Tom Herman even mentioned that to me at halftime, Rod. He said, change just got to settle down. We need to get away from some of the zone read stuff and just give him an opportunity because he says he can really throw the ball. He's got good accuracy and a nice touch. This is a, a young man as a backup who remained engaged and into it in an era where backups are bailing left and right. Yep. Oh, wow. Colin Johnson trying to make the one-handed grab. Great coverage by Jamison Houston. So we don't know how long Bouchelle will be the guy. You know, you see the mutual combat over there by those two. We don't know how significant, significant this shoulder injury is for Ellinger. Will he be back next week? Will he be out for a while? It's unclear. Third down and seven. Baylor playing coverage. Beck makes the catch, and Johnston throws a shoulder into him to bring up fourth down. Big bruising linebacker. Tom Herman did tell us that Bouchelle, his girlfriend's here. He loves Texas. He loves this school. That's also a factor in all of this sure. as to whether or not a player wants to leave and it's not always the football sometimes it is the rest of the experience and Shane has as you guys talked about really embraced the role behind Sam Ellinger this season Trevor White will let it roll inside the 20. Bouchelle back to the bench Baylor's offense back out when you come back You said for a big one at the big house, number 15, Wisconsin. Bringing in that physical Badger group against that excellent secondary and defense of number 12, Michigan, 7.30 Eastern on ABC and also on the ESPN app tonight. You like Jonathan Taylor, don't you? I'm, I'm a fan. ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation. Number nine, Texas, back in the top 10 with a 13-point lead on Charlie Brewer and Baylor. And a burst out on the perimeter by Josh Fleeks on first down. Uh, you know, if you can't run the ball by handing it off, just throw those little swing passes, check downs, get yourself going that way, and that'll help Brewer. Now, remember, Brewer and Ellinger were high school rivals in the Austin area, playing against each other. Nothing there for Charlie Brewer. Gary Johnson with the penetration for Texas. They were rivals. 
They were rivals for offers as well. Ellinger got the offer at Texas. Brewer did not. Brewer is here today. Quite a bit of family. He seemed a little bit wound kind of tight yesterday to us, but he played very loose most of the first half. And this is a big third down. Bayuda has to get something going. Can he find some room in the pocket? Has to scramble again, and he lost his footing. Yeah. I think that time he probably tried to bail on the pocket a little bit too soon and runs into harm's way. He just The ball's got to come out, but I think he's gotten to the point in this game where he's conditioned to expect that it's going to fall apart and he needs to get into his escape mode too soon. That time he could have waited just a wee bit longer. Good kick by Galitz. Jamison. Penalty marker comes flying in. Probably going to be an illegal block in the back here. Feels like Baylor is missing some energy. Yeah. It's like the last four and a half minutes of the first half took Baylor's energy away. And I don't see it on the sideline. I don't see it in their movement. It's, a, it's just a two-score game. They're right in this game right yeah. now. It's a great point, Rod. And we know how explosive this Baylor offense has been at times, Q. I mean, they're, they're, they're one of the better passing units in the country so far through six games. Top 40 scoring offense. They, they can get after it very quickly. Last week, there are two fouls on the play, both by the receiving team. Illegal block in the back, number 29. That penalty is declined. Holding, number two of the receiving team, will be penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Chris Boyd with the holding penalty. Matt Rule and Charlie Brewer trying to get it going on the sideline. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Westlake and Lake Travis, it was all Westlake. That's Sam Ellinger's alma mater beating Charlie Brewer's alma mater. There's Morgan, that is Sam Ellinger's sister, a cheerleader. There's Jenna Ellinger, that's Sam's mother. I think I said his mom, Jenna, and his sister, Morgan. There's Sam Ellinger, unfortunately, out of this game with that shoulder injury. It's Shane Bouchelle the rest of the way for Texas. Ellinger ruled out for the rest of the game. Bouchelle, deep shot, Duvernay, and it's intercepted by Raleigh Tejada. And the takeaway that Baylor needed for a little bit of life finds itself here in the third. Well, and Tejada has had limited action today because Baylor was concerned about the matchup with the bigger receiver since he's only 5'10", 175. But he was in a bail technique. He lined up close but turned and immediately sprinted deep coverage and became the receiver. That is a spark that Baylor needs. The question is, can they take advantage of it? A big pick, the first of Tejada's career. And now Charlie Brewer takes over. Good field position for Baylor here. Brewer's got time. He's going to look deep downfield for Mims, incomplete. So Charlie Brewer with his family in attendance today. He squared off with Sam Ellinger. Brewer was a backup at Lake Travis when they played Ellinger and Westlake in 2014. Mom and dad. There's Laura and Robert. Sister Katie on the outside. Brother Michael to the right of Laura. Brewer is 
Texas royalty, double yep. legacy. Yep. Brewer is going to run it. And we'll set up third down and medium here. I think he always thought he'd get to Texas, never got an offer. A lot of family ties, family history connected. Robert, a quarterback at Texas in the early 80s. Grandpa Charles, a quarterback in the 50s. Grandpa told him yesterday, hey, these are the games you play football for. Days like today. And these are the moments in games where they shift. Either you get back in or you fall off. This is a huge third down. And Matt Rule knows it too. Time yep. out. Well, tomorrow on Sunday NFL countdown at 10 Eastern on ESPN inside the Patriots locker room with the story behind the oh yeah mantra at the 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and then Monday night football 49ers and Packers at Lambeau Field ESPN at 815 Eastern time. Right there, that's the guy I'd like. Heard in the slot. And Brewer rifling, has his man. First down Mims. First and goal for Baylor. What a throw and what a route. He actually beats double coverage. You will see two Longhorns underneath and short and deep. And still, Brewer gets that ball in there as Mims runs a perfect slant. He's the outside receiver. Watch him come inside. You see the man up there? You got double coverage over the top and inside. And he still beats it. That is a tremendous throw, tremendous round. There's your spark for Baylor. Mims getting checked out on the sideline. Brewer looking for Hearn through his hands. Second and goal. You can't play receiver in the NFL for 10 years when you're making drops, and that's Jalen Hurts' second drop in this ball game. Yeah, that was a little hot coming in there, Q, but you got to catch those hot ones. That ball's thrown perfectly high where you want that six foot four guy to go get it. A little hot for him, he couldn't handle it. Well, they come back to him. They've got some opportunities down here with their size at wide receiver. Whole lot of movement before the play. Whole lot of noise, Adam. The enclosed end zone. Yeah. This is the loudest point in the stadium. Q, question for you. How Both much start. of an impact? Offense, multiple players. Five yard penalty. It's second down. Any chance that Hurd got a little bit of sun in his eyes down there on that throw? Yeah, oh, you, you look back, perhaps. It's, it's uh, sitting over the Texas sideline right now. If you look back towards that, that end zone on the right, Rod, though, there's no sun there. He's got to handle that hot throw, then. That's weird shadows this time of day yep. here in Austin. Second and goal back at the 10. Hasty trying to get the edge. Hasty towards the pylon. And he's out of bounds at the 2. Great vision, pure speed and quickness. And Hasty's trapped inside. Change of direction, not a whole lot of help there, but just the quickness and the speed to get to the edge. Stepped out before the ball had crossed the plane of the goal line. Third down and goal from the two. You are building your program. You're trying to reinvent Baylor and Baylor football. This is two down territory. It's Hurd into the end zone for a touchdown. You know, Adam, I thought earlier a lack of energy and that perhaps maybe some of the sun on that sideline was zapping the juice from Baylor while Taylor was in the shade. But you get a pick, you get a big throw and catch, and Hurd gets into the end zone, and now they're juiced up again. 
They needed something. The pick, a spark. Heard the touchdown. Six-point game. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation 4. Jalen Hurd stepping into the end zone to get Baylor within six. And now time for today's Aflac trivia answer. Texas back in the AP top 10 for the first time in over 2,900 days. The longest the FBS school was out. Wow, that's over 17,000 days. Almost 18,000 for Tulane. A penalty marker here. Procedure penalty, and we'll check in with that Nanberg. Baylor is out played. Things very tight in a couple of different games today. In the 35, Texas starts this series. Keontae Ingram pushing the pile for this Texas Longhorn Bunch. Told you, this is a big game for Texas. How do you handle the success, if you're Tom Herman, of being back in the top 10? Ingram breaking free. All the way down inside the 35. And he is the next great running back in Texas, or so the Longhorns hope and believe. He was a great running back in high school football here. Highly rated. Rochelle down to the 26. And you think about a guy like Ingram, Ingram, there's a Baylor player down. But Ingram will get more touches since the quarterback run game has kind of gone away. Texas has been searching for a featured running back for quite a while. Coming off a career game against Oklahoma, Deontay Williams is the Baylor player that is down right now and Matt Rule. He's making his way out to check on him. Number 40 right there. Kind of awkwardly landed on that right hand. Started to reach for that. Williams, a redshirt sophomore from Plano, Texas. His dad, Alfonso, an excellent player at Florida State. This might be uh, this might be a little bit tough. On yeah, Williams it looks here. like that's an looks like an air cast yeah, that's that what they're I bringing out. That is never a good sign. I'm going to bring the card out now to take Williams off the field. It looked to be an air cast being applied to leave the right hand or right wrist area, right arm area of Deontay Williams. Adam, Adam, they have x-rays on site here at the stadium. If he needs to be taken to a medical facility, there's Dell Medical, which... It's about a mile away. Uh, we passed it today on our drive here from our hotel, and it's uh, you, you could walk there if you had to. So he's in good hands right right now. Well, we got a moment here. Let's go back to Adnan and Burke in the studio.
Thank you. Thanks, uh, Adnan. Thanks very much. We're looking at Deontay Williams right now, playing in his 16th career game today. Redshirt sophomore from Plano, Texas. Well, the entire Baylor team, but for looks like the offensive line over there has come out on the field. The entire defensive squad is out there. We did see an air cast come out and be applied. From a team standpoint, Rod, th th this group, after a one-win year last season, they're becoming a team right now. And it's a little subtle things like that, where, where they yep. all gather around their fallen teammate. It's celebrations you see when they score a touchdown. Uh, Matt Rules uh, definitely uh, on the right track with building uh, this group a a as a team. There's no question about it, Q. And some of the things that we've seen in, in games, the way that the players relate to each other. Matt Rule took this job knowing it would be a very, very difficult job. Seven-year contract. This is year two for him yep. at Baylor. coming off the field moments ago we saw this Tom Herman Matt rule in quick meeting all the concern was with Deontay Williams there from both sides Texas back at it second down and four up by six final minutes of this third quarter 3-0 in the Big 12. Baylor's 2-1. It is Ingram. Bouncing to the outside. Let's see where the forward progress gets marked. It was right at the sticks near the 22. That'll be enough to move the chains. Yeah, this is a very tough area right there when you have Thompson in there. He's only about 220 pounds at six foot six and Texas just targets him and goes after him because they know they can move him off the line. Yep. Bouchelle looked like he threw behind Beck. Uh, he and Beck weren't on the same page. Is that an RPO? Yeah and Beck was Beck was not looking. I mean Beck was was gone. He was looking up somebody to block or not expecting the ball but the offensive line was blocking a run play which you get in an RPO a run pass option and Beck didn't read exactly what Bouchelle read well option good catch by Ingram uh, good job in space by Raleigh Tejada. Yeah, and, and give credit to Baylor for recognizing the option guy was the quarterback. And that's not the quarterback who's going to run. He's going to pitch that. That is not what Bouchelle prefers to do. It's not what they prefer to have him do. That's an Ellinger thing, and he's out of the game. He's not playing anymore today. Well, you said they're going to need more touches from Ingram. He's over 100 yards now. A career high. First 100-yard game for the freshman from Carthage, Texas. And he gets the reception here. Inside the 20. And it'll set up Texas at the 16 with fourth down coming up. A career high for Ingram in rushing. Under Armour All-American twice had 2,000 yards in high school. He's been dealing with a bit of a knee issue, but he's getting healthier. And he's more and more important, it looks like, for Texas. They've had a few running backs here. They celebrated one today, one Ricky Williams 20, 20 years, years ago. 20 years ago, yep. Heisman winner. Dicker for the first time today misses. Oh, wow. He had been on target on some distance kicks, but he misses that one. Are, are you with me in the sense that Baylor has outplayed Texas today for all but about four and a half minutes in that second quarter. Yeah, that's, that late 
portion of the second quarter, I there was an it, issue. Yeah, I, I think as we take a look at Roberts, Greg Roberts was down. Roberts down. In that four and a half minute stretch, I believe Texas scored like 17 points. Yep. Other than that, Baylor has been the more assertive. They've been more aggressive. They control the game more. But, but that period of the game is when Texas got back in. They scored 17 straight points yeah. in that stretch. Roberts hobbles off the field as we check in with Adnan Verk in the studio. UCF coming all the way back. Georgia still in some tough straights. And now a little bit of a little bit of tension in the building now as Brewer takes over. Down by six. Still a long way to go here in Austin, Texas. As Lovett carries it to the 26-yard line. Matt Rule told us yesterday. Let me get the game to the fourth quarter. Let me get to that fourth quarter. Put a little pressure on Texas see how my guys respond. I'm telling them we get to the fourth quarter, we might do something special. Love it again. That's second effort to get the first down to the 31 yard line. That's hard running inside. And when you ask the question, is Texas back, as we st stated at the beginning of the show, that question ultimately gets answered by how physical is Texas on the defensive line? How physical is Texas on the offensive line? And right now, Baylor is running the ball at will. Love it. Trying to cut. Good job by Brandon Jones to shut that play down. But there come the penalty flags. This Is it Brandon Personal Jones? Foul, face mask, defense number 19. 15-yard yep. penalty, automatic first down. Brandon Jones, the junior, their leading tackler. Well, and he, he stopped this play cold. He has it right here. Yep, he grabbed it from the very beginning. And then at the end, yeah, yeah, at the end, he knew he didn't have to do that. He already had enough jersey to make the tackle. I think he was a little frustrated that Lovett was pushing back on him. They're checking the original spot. Now adding 15 yards to the play. And they'll spot it at the 46. Love it. Good run on first down. And that will take us to the close of the quarter. Matt Rule said it. Let's get it to the fourth with a top 10 team on the road. The Baylor Bears are driving. We've got a good one in Austin. Come on back. Our game summary through three quarters. Sam Ellinger left the game early in this contest with a shoulder injury. It's been Shane Bouchelle since. Charlie Brewer, the Austin native, with a touchdown and a pick. Texas with a turnover in the third quarter, their first turnover in over three games. Six-point game start of the fourth quarter. A short yardage situation on second down for Jalen Hurd. Trying to inch forward. It'll be third down and about a yard. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick, our crew here at Darrell K. Royal Memorial. Quarterback sneak, Charlie Brewer. Looks like he did have enough for the first down. Well, I think they need Mims back in the game. He's He's been out for a while on that sideline. They're a dynamic wide receiver. Texas has struggled to cover him in man. 
And then when they doubled him, he converted a big catch and run against double coverage. Three catches, 80 yards for Denzel Mims today. He tilts the field when he's out there. You have to pay attention to him. Heard. Going to get to the outside, and he gets shut down. Boyd and Locke. Spilling that all the way out to the sideline. Great defense, great speed, great pursuit. Watch this, lateral movement. You see them just get outside. Boyd being at the edge, turning it back inside so Hurd could not get upfield, just stringing it out. And that inside-out pursuit, that's really good defense. There he is, that's the guy. Uh, he started early. They were looking for him. It was deflected into the air. Yeah. As soon as he was back on the field, that's where Charlie Brewer's eyes went to Denzel Mims, his second leading receiver this year. Well, that's the third time he's had a ball batted down. Stands about six foot one. And one of the knocks on him coming out of high school was that he was too small, not tall enough. He was only about six feet then, a shade under six feet. He's taller now. Texas Blitz. Nowhere to go for Brewer. Charles Omenahu. It is very difficult to have a back pick up a blitzer like Foster. Foster came blitzing in from what would be kind of a safety nickel spot, number 25, and he just ran into the running back trying to pick him up, knocked him over, collapsed the pocket, and that allowed Nelson, 97, to finish off Brewer. That is 10 tackles for loss by the Texas defense. Fair catch by Jamison. And tonight after top rank boxing on ESPN Sports Center with reaction from the Bud Crawford fight with the incredible pre-fight dust up. Teddy Atlas and Stephen A will have reaction. Four top 10 teams with difficult road tests today and they have been tests. And then key moments from both league championship series games, game two in the NL, game one in the AL, all coming up on Sports Center after college football closes out your don't, Saturday. Don't you love October? This was the weekend a year ago that provided a lot of excitement. Boy, that looks to be the umpire. That's Marlo Fitzgerald. He's being tended to. We'll step aside. Take a look at our blip-worthy play brought to us by Goodyear. So Baylor outplayed Texas, except for the last 421 of the first half. 14 points, including a break for Texas, a non-interception call, followed by Jordan Humphrey getting into the end zone with that. And then right before half, instead of ending it, they get a pick that leads to another score. Texas took control. Baylor got back in it this half. Now Texas takes over. At its own 17 yard line, Trey Watson on a short carry. Close to the sticks. Yeah, they caught Baylor's defensive line slanting right while Texas was running the opposite way. Sometimes you guess wrong on defense. Third and one. 
Blitz from Baylor. He'll run against it. And should have enough for the first down. Bravion Roy brought Watson down. Well, that'll move the chains for Texas. He's into it. He's feeling it. Number one Longhorn fan. <laughs> Got to support it. Baylor is saying that there was some movement up front against Texas. Full start. Offense number 47. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. Goes back the tight end. And this is where Baylor defensively has to be careful. They're having trouble stopping the running game. That makes you want to get an extra guy into the box. Yep. You do that, you're going to leave one of your corners on an island with a big receiver, and that could be a problem. And a pound ahead. Yeah. Te Texas fans know this story a little bit too well, the, the fourth quarter story. This was an issue for them last year. They had the lead in four of the six losses last year in the fourth quarter. This year, they have one of the worst fourth quarter scoring margins. I know that gets skewed by 21 to 3 last week yeah. against Oklahoma. Yeah. That's still not something that Tom Herman is pleased about. His theme last year was finish. Not get caught. Yep. Yeah. Colin Johnson on the catch. Puts a shoulder into a couple of defenders. Third down coming up as we check in with that Nanvert. Unbeaten's getting tested. Minnesota gave Ohio State a little bit of a push. Pitt had a lead on Notre Dame after one quarter. There's Johnson again. Forward progress may be enough. 37-yard line was the line to gain, and he did have enough to move the chains with the forward progress. I expect Texas to go back to the ground attack. They're trying to bait Baylor into bringing that extra guy into the box and then taking a shot with Johnson or Humphrey when, when, they, get, when they get the single coverage. Rochelle. Duvernay with the catch in Baylor territory. Yep, that one, that one works as well. And a penalty marker thrown on the far side of the field. Chris See? Miller still turning around and chatting with Duvernay. <laughs> There is no foul for a late hit out of bounds. It's first down. And picked up the flag for a late hit. Oh, one thing Reggie Smith told us before the game is that they're trying to do a much better job of letting the players play and uh, not being ticky tack. Yeah, nothing there. That's, and that's, that's a good that's example good. of it. That's a good job to pick up that flag. Here's Humphrey. You have to be physical with him. Good job out on the perimeter by Blake Lynch to get him out of bounds. This is probably the best defense that Baylor has played all season. Sure. I mean, you think about the, the opponent that they have. Listen, they gave up 40 to Duke, and that's no slight to Duke. Right. But Texas is a superior offensive team. Correct. They've held Texas on the road in check today. Agreed. Option. Ingram works his way to the 43. Chris, Chris Miller, Miller with the hit. He came flying up like a missile. He knew exactly where to go because he wasn't thinking quarterback. He's like, that's that's just a sweep for me. Let me come get this. Watch him come flying up. Pat wow. is that big hit. Yeah, you weren't kidding when you said missile, and he's had to go to the sideline. Maybe he's a little worse for the wear after that hit. JT Woods, the freshman, has to take Miller's spot after that physical play. Third down and five. Into tight quarters for Colin Johnson. His career-high ninth reception is good enough to move the chains. Uh, the big man out of Valley Christian High School in San Jose, California, 
earns this one. I mean, there's not a big window there at all. That ball is squeezed in there by Bouchelle, and he takes a big hit. Keeps the chains moving. So he's showing you more than just a guy who can run down the field and catch the long ball. He's showing you that toughness and the ability to protect the football after the catch. He's been a closer for Texas more than one game in his career. Ingram. 11th play of the drive, yeah. Adam. Yeah, I, I sense that this Baylor defense is at their tipping point. They've done a great job all day preventing the big play. That was their Achilles heel throughout this season. It's about 85% good, and then they have some catastrophic breakdowns defensively. Better right. today, but I worry about them right now because they're getting tired. Yeah, Q, this is going to be the 73rd Texas play in what's been a physical game all day. That's a good job up front by Johnston. And some help from some of the big boys. James Lockhart coming off the edge. Uh, Third Texas, down. Texas relying on running the counter inside, running a little inside zone, just pushing Baylor off. And this third down play, got to send them back to the air. And it's been all about number nine making these huge catches for them. And he's out on the edge now. Out there. The top of the formation with Humphrey in the slot on that side. Baylor goes coverage. Bouchelle looking for Humphrey. Incomplete. And Texas was asking for a flag. They thought maybe Houston had perhaps grabbed Humphrey. I think that's what Tom Herman was asking for. Well, Humphreys will, will lean on you a little bit. And so you had a little bit of pushback or grab back by Houston. That's mutual combat. You lean in there and push off. Official's going to let you play a little bit. This from 51. And Dicker is unable to connect. Back to back misses. And it's still a touchdown game with less than six to play. Twice he's hooked it. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation 4, the best place to play. Got a chance to be a part of the uh, college football playoff mock selection this week. We went back to 2013 and basically played out the BCS uh -huh. as if there were a playoff system. Days like today, though, are what throw everything out yeah. of balance when Georgia is getting tested, when UCF got tested, when Notre Dame was tested, Ohio State, and now a top 10 team in Texas with a six-point lead that feels very tenuous right now is on defense with Charlie Brewer and the Bears going back to work on offense. John Lovett on first down, setting it up for this Baylor offense. There's no whistle yet. Yep. That was the refs really letting him play, yeah. and, and Baylor got it, the, the well, pile rolling there at him. That type of game, right, Q? Yep. It's been that type of game all day. Well, Q, make no mistake about it now. This is Charlie Brewer's moment. This is the moment he's waited for. If you told him on Tuesday, you're down six, You've got the ball, and you can take down Texas. He said, give me that. Give me all that. Brewer to the sideline. It'll be third down and seven coming up. I'm trying to do it without Denzel Mims. He's got a bad wheel getting looked at by the trainers. It's his right Looks like his right hip or right quad. So he's on the bench. And well, he's also losing Thornton, who's limping off. Puts more pressure on flat 14 and also Hurd. But make no mistake, Brewer has to come up with the play. He's feeling that. Texas didn't want him. Texas said no. Here he is. 
Deep shot. Platt incomplete. It'll be fourth down. I think Platt needed to keep running through that instead of reaching out the one hand. Keep running and wait to the last minute. It would have been a spectacular one-handed catch. A little bit long for him. But run as far as you can before you leave your feet. Punting unit a little bit late getting out there for Baylor here. Play clock's already winding down to three. Yeah, they're going to need a timeout or they're going to lose five. The play clock's at zero. The way of game, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Well, again, the five yards isn't a killer. It's just, I was just curious as to, oh, it's taking a little bit of time. I wonder what Matt Rule was going through oh, on the sideline yeah, well, there. Yeah, I'll tell you what happens is, is late in the game, someone who's a starter on special yep. teams gets hurt, and that number two forgets or isn't alerted. Good yep. call, Q. Yep. Way to be on it, Q. Good punt inside the 20. Fair catch signaled by Brandon Jones. Texas ball up. Inside of five, it's been Shane Bouchelle's team today. We get our king of the moment brought to you by Burger King. It is the guy slinging passes today. Shane Bouchelle, his first opportunity this season with an injury to Sam Ellinger. The big play to Colin Johnson. One of the big moments of this game and all part of the PlayStation Player Index for Shane Bouchelle. Well, he came in and did what a good backup should do, 17 of 31 after not having played at all this season, has managed the game and made good throws, good decisions. And Baylor makes a good decision on this first down with a run blitz to shut down the rushing attack and try to put pressure on Texas to throw the ball. They don't want Texas to run the ball here and burn clock and force them to use timeouts. Ellinger watching from the sideline, the right shoulder injury. Baylor has held Texas scoreless here in the second half. Two missed field goals, part of that as well. Humphrey. Jordan Humphrey. He's got the first down. Out across the 25 to the 27. There are missed tackles, and there are guys who make you miss tackles. And there is a guy who recognizes the moment and stays in bounds and keeps the clock running, but he made three guys miss and then ran over the last guy. Lil Jordan Humphrey has got great chemistry with his quarterbacks. A running back his whole career, but he moved a wide receiver at Texas. Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, says his IQ is as high as anybody you'll find in college football. Now they go to the other big man, Colin Johnson. And he's close to the sticks at the 37-yard line. Yeah, Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, recognizing he's getting run blitzes inside. So he's simply changing the rushing attack by throwing the quick screens outside and letting his big receivers run with the ball. He knows a couple first downs could ice this game. How many, Rod? Two more. Two more. Two more, right? Yeah, the Baylor's timeout scenario. Two more first downs. And I think that's likely right. Win. Definitely three. The clock continues to move down to three minutes. Another screen. Johnson on the outside with a good gain. Clock continues to move unless Baylor wants to use a timeout here. Well, that's three straight of quick screens like that. And so you have no choice if you're Baylor. It looks like that's Johnson. Yep, again. Down. You have no choice. You have to bring another man up to take that away. That's hurting you more than... They're rushing inside right now. Johnston's down. We'll step aside. Play Johnston back to the sideline after being involved in a physical tackle. Terrell Bernard has checked into the game at linebacker for Baylor. Now Reggie Smith just announced 
that Baylor has a timeout charged to them. Two forty one remaining second and five coming up here. Again ABC later on tonight the excellent running back Jonathan Taylor for Wisconsin the transfer from Ole Miss Shea Patterson a quarterback from Michigan ABC at 730 this evening Wisconsin and Michigan Alabama and Missouri getting going here on ESPN in about 15 minutes. Keeping it on the ground, try to get that clock moving. Matt Rule will take that final timeout. And Texas has not been able to line up and simply move Baylor off the ball inside and run the ball. They've picked up first downs on this drive with the bubble screen out to their big guys, to Humphrey, to Johnson, and those two have been stars. You know, that, that's what they need from them every week. And they've delivered some, some big plays. You see them. 6'4 and 6'6. Six, six. Lots of targets. I was going to say 18 catches on 24 targets. Pretty good ratio yeah, for those not, guys, not too. So, not so bad, huh? Yep. Let's check it with Adnan Verk back in the studio. test is Alabama getting tested tonight No. everybody else all the unbeaten they are getting will, tested they will today. avoid the jinx of week seven remember oh here we go we've seen the Wildcat before today yep Humphrey's got a rushing touchdown in this game and Baylor comes up with the stop there Bravion Roy with the tackle on Humphrey remember Baylor is out of timeouts but it is fourth down, and they seemingly will get the ball back inside of two minutes. Well, Herman decided not to take any chances. He likes the way his defense is playing, and he trusts them. And now he'll let this thing run down under two minutes. And then it's on Brewer again with no timeouts and a last shot at taking down Texas. Buczewski averaging 45 today on his punts, including a pair inside the 20. We'll get a good Texas bounce all the way down inside the five. Excellent kick by the freshman Buczewski. And that's why you like your return guy to catch those things and not let them roll. That was a 55 yarder. Now under Tom Herman over the course of the last two years five losses when leading in the fourth quarter. A bunch of those came last season in a seven and six campaign. They got a great scare from Oklahoma a week ago when they were up 21 trying to hold on here at home in Austin as a top 10 team. Now Todd Orlando can be unpredictable for Texas as a defensive coordinator. He might look at this as an opportunity to bring pressure and try and get a safety and in the game. Brewer over the middle and he's got his man. Poole Strickland with just the second catch of his season and it comes in a huge spot. Well he has no choice. They don't have Mims, their best receiver right now. Brewer checks it down. Hasty. And he'll step out of bounds smartly. Again, Baylor is without timeouts inside of two minutes. If you step out of bounds on your own accord, that stops the clock until the next snap. Well, without Mims in the game, someone else needs to step up, look for Platt more and Hurd more. But Platt is the speedster. Hurd is more of your in the middle of the field guy. Brewer climbing in the pocket and taking off. Diving for the sticks. And they'll mark him out right at the line to gain with a minute 17 remaining.
How does Texas play it? When does Texas think about pressure? Roar, time running out. We'll sling it to the sideline. Pressure from Gary Johnson on the backside. Second down and 10. Uh, Baylor picked up much of the pressure here. In fact, they only brought four, but you can see Johnson looping around. He came on a stunt from his linebacking spot and had to go all the way around to try to get to Brewer. This three by one formation makes Texas face. How do you deal with the single receiver on the other side? Are you confident man to man or do you double over there? Brewer over the middle for Strickland again. He had one catch all season. It came against Duke. He's come up with the two biggest catches of this Baylor game today. Well, they're putting him over there on that single side of the three by one. And Texas has to decide, do you single or double? And last time they singled. Texas will use one of its three timeouts here. Again, this three by one formation on that last play allowed Strickland to get inside. Just a slant. And so now Texas, if you get that again, Q, you got to figure out how do you deal with that single side? Do you double it up? I'll tell you, Brewer in this ball game has done his best work over the middle coming out of the end zone on this drive. That last pass, he stands in there and delivers darts over the middle. And maybe his lack of arm strength sometimes comes into play outside the numbers, but he's been terrific over the middle. Q, is there a better scenario that he and his family could have dreamed up for him coming back and playing at DKR for the first time after watching games here as a kid? Dad Robert looks on. Brewer running towards the sideline and he will dive towards the sticks again. He'll stop the clock at 45 seconds regardless. His Remember dad, Baylor, Baylor out of timeouts, Rod. His dad quarterback here at Texas, as did his grandfather. Brewer starred in high school here. Did not get an offer from Texas. Hand off. There goes Ebner. And Tristan Ebner inside the Texas 30 yard line. First and 10, 39 seconds. The clock stops to reset the chains and then moves on the referee signal. No timeouts, but they are within range of taking shots at the end zone. Just a three man rush. Brewer finds a man over the middle and Platt. He did not make the line to gain, so the clock continues to move. It's second down, 20 seconds remaining. They can spike it here if they want. And they will. Third down and one coming up with 15 seconds to go. This is where they really miss Denzel Mim, six foot three and their best receiver. Let's check in with Adnan Verk while we have a moment. Third down and one here. Brewer is going to take the yardage. Clock stops to reset the change on the first down, but they're, they're going to have to spike this they, again. Yeah. They just don't have time. They're running out of time. They got to stop the clock. As soon as it's spotted, it'll go. They need to spike it. Yep, there's the whistle to move the clock. They're just going to go ahead and take a shot. Brewer, end zone, nearly intercepted. It was dropped by Brandon Jones. And now there's only six seconds remaining. You've got one play. And Brandon Jones is playing center field, sitting back there, and just missed it. He'll sit there again. This ball has to go to the end zone. 
It all comes down to this. Pressure from Texas. Brewer launches. Incomplete, but there's still time remaining. One second left, and Todd Orlando brought the pressure that time. And if you're Baylor, you have to assume it's coming again. That was B.J. Foster bringing the pressure. But good awareness by Brewer. No time for anything. He's got to get it to the end zone if Baylor is going to have a shot here. A touchdown ties it. Brewer, the Austin native, towards the end zone. Texas wins it. A thriller in Austin. Texas gets the victory. High school teammates Brewer and Brewer meeting. Shane Bouchelle for the injured Sam Ellinger today. And after all of that, a sigh of relief for the Horns as they win it. He had Jalen Hurd in the end zone at six foot four, but this is too far. Out of play, Hurd had no chance. But if this ball is in the end zone, Heard with his size might have had a chance, but way too much pressure for Brewer to be able to get that ball where he wanted it. Texas with a six game win streak. It all came down to one final play. The former Texas quarterback, the father of the Baylor QB. You can understand that emotion. 23 to 17, the final score for Rod Quinton, our crew, Adam Singh, so long. Steve Bryan, Todd, I hope it's as good for you tonight, buddy.